Hello everyone and welcome back to the Food Forest, or I suppose I should be referring to it as the Future Food Forest, since we are still not getting any kind of significant portion of our diet out of here. We do have some Egyptian walking onions down here, but as you can see that's uh, not really going to count for much. We've got some peach trees, which should hopefully start producing some fruit next year. And we do have some blueberries way over there. I have blueberries. But we have all the space. We need to get some more fruit trees and berries and nuts and perennial vegetables and all kinds of things in there. As I said before, I am still working on a video about the importance of the layers of the food forest and how you can utilize those layers to produce lots of food in each layer. So there's still a lot that is missing from here, but I'll go into a lot more detail about that in that video. For now, let's take a look at what we do have. So for the most part, we just have lots of herbs and native wildflowers, and all of that stuff is working great. Although I am learning a bit about how much we can actually fit in here. I think I really tried to cram too much in. Black Eyed Susan's really just uh, kind of took over the blazing star. There's some oregano down under there somewhere. I think part of that is because we are still not getting enough sunlight here from the maple tree, and I'm not sure what may be happening with that someday. It does have a lot of damage from uh, birds and squirrels making homes in there. Nothing against them. That's what they do. I'm happy they have a home. If that tree is out in a forest somewhere, that's totally fine, but they the silver maple is not a good landscaping tree because it will just start to fall apart as the critters make homes in there. So that may have to come out someday and uh, because these things really look like they are just not getting enough sun here. That's partly why they are so tall, just like when your seedlings get really leggy, they're reaching for the sunlight. I think a lot of the same thing is happening here. Uh, the Black Eyed Susans really stretched up pretty tall. It was This was all pretty massive. We had a lot of rain back in June and they all just kind of fell over. So I uh, still need to figure out some, some things with that, maybe make some adjustments. But otherwise, it really is fascinating to see just how well these things work for bringing in pollinators. Uh, you always hear about how they'll bring in bees and butterflies and all that, and as an amateur gardener growing this stuff for the first time, it, it was just so exciting to see that in action. Uh, I see things out here every day when I come out. We've had monarchs and swallowtails, so many different kinds of bees out here. They just love it. Everything is just swarming all over this. Of course, it's died down a little bit now this time of year. Some of these are are dying off, but we do still see plenty of activity around here. Uh, it's just great. I love it. Um, it really is just like you plant the things that they like and the beneficial insects will come to your yard. You get a nice little field of dreams thing happening here. It's, it's just beautiful. So uh, yes, we do also have some bee balm over here. This is already kind of finished and then we've got some that is still flowering there. But really, this is just a, a pollinator and herb garden at the moment. So we need a lot more food here. So the two big future food producers are the peach trees. This is a red haven. And then we have an Alberta over here. And these are both dwarf trees. Should only get to about eight feet tall or so. Uh, they're doing very well. We are starting to see the bark forming on the branches that we've let grow. I was a bit concerned about these after last fall when a critter came along and chomped all the branches down to some little stubs there. There wasn't much of it left, um, but it has grown back quite a bit, as you can see. And I'm trying to keep them protected with some fence. I may put some chicken wire around that as well. And then in the fall, maybe uh, early spring, I might have to do a little bit of pruning on these just to make sure that they 
are getting enough airflow as the tree develops and, and gets bigger and matures a bit. Uh, but otherwise, they are just looking fantastic. Hopefully next year we will finally start getting some peaches on those. One really big thing that we are missing here is nitrogen fixation. We definitely need to have a lot more nitrogen fixing species in here. We do have a lot of white clover that was already growing in the yard that comes up in different places. Uh, of course, I covered a lot of that with the mulch, but uh, we do definitely want to add some perennial species uh, growing next to, especially around the peach trees and create part of that guild to add more nitrogen and also provide us some food. Uh, so I'm thinking something like a sea buckthorn, uh, goomy berry would be great as long as I can find varieties that will survive our cold winters here. And then we can get those pretty close to the peach trees where they won't invade the space too much and uh, get more nitrogen happening in here. Otherwise, of course, there are some other things we can grow. I, I did already try planting uh, some lupins around both trees last spring and those quickly got devoured by birds or squirrels or rabbits. So I am starting some more inside now, trying to let those grow a bit bigger before bringing them out here just to uh, get them going. That would look really nice as well to have some, some lupins around there. Of course, that's not really food for us, but it would be great for the wildlife and uh, look really nice. But even if we don't have enough nitrogen fixation, I don't think anybody could say that we don't have enough comfrey around here. We've got some here and back in that corner and some more and there's some more way over there. So probably a bit too much, but again, in the early stages here, it's uh, a great thing for adding fertility as comfrey is very well known, very loved by permaculturists everywhere for uh, bringing up those nutrients from the soil and you can use it as mulch. And uh, so the great thing about this, if you haven't grown comfrey before, so this already grew to this size and flowered and everything and uh, kind of went through its whole flowering phase. There were lots of bumblebees around here. And so I chopped this all the way down to the ground. Every plant in here completely cut down, used it as mulch around several places, especially around the peach trees. And that was, I'd say, back in June. And now you can see that the plants have completely grown back again and flowered again quite a bit. Some of them are, are still flowering, still attracting more pollinators. So this plant really is uh, a powerhouse for uh, adding some fertility and giving you some, some nice mulch. Uh, we added a lot of this to the compost pile to get that going too. So this is what I'm talking about with my poor organization here. We've got some butterfly weed growing down here. Underneath everything else hasn't really had much of a chance to do anything there. So, uh, well, we're just gonna have to start kind of propagating some things, split some off from there, spread them out, maybe set up some new pollinator areas. We might as well check on the blueberries way over here too. They are doing very well. Got some new growth. This is a sweetheart blueberry, and this is a Blu-ray. So, yep, doing excellent. I am about to check the soil pH on these again to see where that is and uh, make sure we're on track with that. See if we need to add some more sulfur to the soil. Kind of wish I had done that maybe before doing this video, then I'd have an answer for you, but that could always be a future video topic. So, we still can't really spread anything out into this part of the yard. <laughs> We're going to wind up taking over the whole yard eventually, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, so the sewer project that's supposed to be happening back along here, I should mention, has actually been postponed now. So that is supposed to be taking place possibly next year between April and August. So that should certainly make it interesting to try to make some gardening videos out here with all that going on during peak gardening time, but we will see how it goes. So everything that we planted last year has done really well. We've got oregano in a few places. 
and the sage has quadrupled in size and uh, this year we just added some rosemary and then over here we've got some mint and I realize this is going to spread quite a bit that's okay it's delicious we like to put it in our iced tea so that's really about it for the time being and uh, as I said I am working on a video to go into much more detail on all of the layers of the food forest and I am also figuring out what else we can start uh, purchasing to plant into here and hopefully I may even be able to start getting some things in here this fall uh, maybe have to wait until the spring but we'll see how that goes thanks for watching I'll see you next time